the eviction William Ollingham in early morning twilight, raw and chill, damp vapors brooding on the barren hill, through miles of mire and steady grave array three score well-armed police pursue their way. Each tall and bearded man a rifle swings, and under each great coat a bayonet clings, the sheriff on his sturdy cob astride talks with the chief, who marches by their side, and, creeping on behind them, Padine who pretends his needful duty much to rue. Six big-boned laborers, clad in common frieze, walk in the midst, the sheriff's staunch allies. Six crowbar men, from distant county brought. Orange, and glorying in their work, tis thought, but wrongly, dash churls of Catholics are they, and merely hired at half a crown a day. The hamlet clustering on its hill is seen, a score of petty homesteads, dark and mean. Poor railways, not despairing until now. Long used, as well as poverty knows how, with life's oppressive trifles to contend. This day will bring its history to an end. Moveless and grim against the cottage walls lean a few silent men, but someone calls far off. And then a child without a stitch runs out of doors, flies back with piercing screech, and soon from house to house is heard the cry of female sorrow, swelling loud and high, which makes the men blaspheme between their teeth. Meanwhile, o'er fence and watery field beneath, the little army moves through drizzling rain. A crowbar leads the sheriff's nag. The lane is entered, and their plashing tramp draws near. One instant, outcry holds its breath to hear Amperson quo. Halt! Amperson quo! At the doors they form in double line, and ranks of polished rifles wetly shine. The sheriff's painful duty must be done. He begs for quiet and the work's begun. The strong stand ready. Now appear the rest, girl, matron, grandsire, baby on the breast, and Rosie's thin face on a pallet born. A motley concourse, feeble and forlorn. One old man, tears upon his wrinkled cheek, stands trembling on a threshold, tries to speak, but, in defect of any word for this, mutely upon the door post prints a kiss, then passes out forever. Through the crowd the children run bewildered, wailing loud. Where needed most, the men combine their aid. And, last of all, is Una fourth conveyed, reclined in her accustomed straw and chair, her aged eyelids closed, her thick white hair escaping from her cap. She feels the chill, looks round and murmurs, then again is still. Now bring the remnants of each household fire. On the wet ground the hissing coals expire. And Padine who, with meekly dismal face, receives the full possession of the place.